James Webb Telescope will help SpaceX's mission to Mars. It was just revealed that the James Webb Telescope is going to play an integral role in SpaceX's Mars mission. Excited to know more about this? Welcome to Tech United, a place where we bring tech and people closer together. Excited enough? What are you waiting for? Subscribe, like, share, and click on the notification bell to get the latest news and updates on Tesla, Apple, SpaceX, and more. If all goes according to plan, the massive telescope will stare at the universe's initial stars and galaxies, sniff the atmospheres of nearby alien planets, and do a variety of other high-profile, high-impact work during the next 5 to 10 years. The space telescope flew into an overcast sky over Kourou before disengaging from its Ariane space-built rocket approximately a half hour later. As live views of Webb floating away and deploying its solar array reached Earth, cheers erupted at launch control. On NASA's live transmission, an Ariane space flight controller cheered, Go Webb, go! NASA Administrator Bill Nelson told Space.com last week that the mission is one of a kind. It is the most advanced technology that, if successful, will unlock mysteries of the cosmos that will be astounding, if not overpowering, delivering a quantum leap in comprehension of who we are, how we got here, what we are, and how it all evolves. Every mission must include the phrase, if successful. It seems especially important to emphasize with Webb, considering the observatory's colossal importance and complexity. Webb is by far the most complex thing NASA has ever done, according to Jonathan Gardner, Deputy Senior Project Scientist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. It's possibly the largest pure science effort the US has ever undertaken. Webb has been in development for about three decades. The discussion began in September 1989 at the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore when a group of astronomers met to consider a possible successor to the Hubble Space Telescope. Hubble hadn't even launched yet, but because large space telescopes take a long time to plan and build, astronomers like to plan ahead a decade or two. And in this case, there was a strong desire to avoid a protracted observation gap between Hubble and the successor, which was dubbed the Next Generation Space Telescope informally. Hubble was successfully launched into Earth orbit in April 1990, but it soon became clear that something was seriously wrong. The scope's initial photos were frustratingly fuzzy. According to Robert Smith, a history professor at the University of Alberta in Canada who has written extensively about Hubble and other astronomy missions, this unanticipated development had a chilling effect on NGST planning. Things weren't advancing very much as a result, Smith stated during a presentation to NASA's Future in Space Operations Working Group last week, referring to the NGST's development status at the time. Fixing Hubble was the top priority. In December 1993, spacewalking astronauts corrected a defect in Hubble's 7.9-foot-wide primary mirror by installing corrective optics and replacement equipment. According to Smith, the repair permitted NGST work to resume, but more than three years of planning time had been lost, or at the very least jeopardized. By the mid-1990s, it had become clear that the NGST should focus on the early universe as it was only 1 billion years after the Big Bang, which occurred 13.8 billion years ago, Hubble had already supplied views of the cosmos, according to Gardner. But astronomers intended to delve further deeper, ideally all the way back to the birth of the universe's first stars and galaxies, which most likely formed within the first few hundred million years. Because of this primary goal, the new telescope has to be designed to collect and analyze infrared light, which we perceive as heat, a significant change from Hubble, which primarily observes optical and ultraviolet wavelengths. After all, the early stars and galaxies' optical and UV emissions have been stretched so far by the universe's continuous expansion that we can now detect them at longer infrared wavelengths. Infrared light also travels faster than its higher energy cousins, allowing it to pass through the clouds of dust and gas that litter the universe. To collect enough deep space photons to investigate, the new observatory would have to be quite large. A primary mirror with a width of at least 13.2 feet was required in the original design. The NGST team was pushed to think bigger by then NASA chief Daniel Golden, and a 26.4-foot-wide mirror was quickly added to the plan. According to Smith, 
the NGST's core architecture was nearly complete by 1996. Researchers predicted at the time that the powerful observatory would cost around $1 billion and might launch as early as 2007. We can clearly see that such statistics were far too optimistic. Even though the observatory's scope had been reduced slightly, the anticipated cost had risen to roughly $5 billion by 2010, and the planned launch had been pushed back to 2014. Its mirror diameter had been reduced to 6 meters from 6.5 meters, or 19.7 feet from 21.3 feet. There was growing worry that the mission's ever-increasing appetite, which was officially named after Apollo-era NASA chief James Webb in September 2002, might starve other NASA astrophysics programs, a feeling expressed in a 2010 nature story titled The Telescope That Ate Astronomy. In July 2011, the House Appropriations Committee considered terminating Webb's appointment. Scientists and powerful politicians, including then-U.S. Senator Barbara Mikulski, battled to save the project, and it was saved a few months later. Webb was always going to be a massively complex and large machine. Its lofty observing objectives demanded it. For example, the telescope's scientific instruments must be kept extremely cool. Any considerable thermal radiation from them would overwhelm Webb's tiny infrared signals. The observatory's goal operating temperature is roughly minus 370 degrees Fahrenheit, which the spaceship will attain via a two-pronged approach. A five-layer sunshield, each sheet the size of a tennis court, is one of those prongs. The other is Webb's destination. Instead of Earth orbit, he'll fly to the Sun-Earth Lagrange point too, a gravitationally stable position 930,000 miles from our planet. In an L2 explication, NASA officials said, what is distinctive about this orbit is that it allows the telescope to stay in line with the Earth as it goes around the Sun. The enormous sunshield on the satellite protects the telescope from the Sun, Earth, and Moon's light and heat. Webb will be on its own out there because L2 is too far away for astronauts to visit. Hubble-style service flights are not planned for the massive new telescope. The fully extended sunshield and primary mirror are both too large to fit inside the Ariane 5 or any other currently functioning rocket's payload fairing, or protective nose cone. As a result, both parts were launched in a compact configuration today and will unfold during Webb's time in space. The mirror is made up of 18 hexagonal segments, each of which is composed of beryllium and has a tiny film of gold applied to it. Those 18 pieces together weigh only 1,375 pounds on Earth, which is around 800 pounds less than Hubble's single-piece primary mirror, which has only one-sixth the light-collecting area. James Webb has an overall mass of around 6,500 kilograms on Earth, which is somewhat less than half that of Hubble. Four scientific equipment will study the photons captured by the mirror. The near-infrared camera, near-infrared spectrograph, mid-infrared instrument, and fine guidance sensor, near-infrared imager, and slitless spectrograph. Webb will be able to look profoundly throughout time and space with the help of this quartet. If everything goes according to plan, the telescope will detect cosmic objects 10 billion times fainter than the faintest star seen without a telescope in the night sky. According to NASA officials, this is 10 to 100 times fainter than anything Hubble can detect. Webb's eyesight would be so acute that it will be able to distinguish features as small as a penny from a distance of 24 miles, they noted. It took a long time and a lot of money to develop all of this superior scientific and engineering technology. But, according to Gardner, far more effort was put into ensuring that it would perform as anticipated once Webb arrived in space. We had to put everything through vibration and acoustic testing at the levels that it will get during the launch," he explained to Space.com. Then, we had to place it in a vacuum chamber and make sure that everything operated in vacuum at the operational temperature. With that, we are at the end of the video. If you liked today's video on new AI technologies, then you might want to watch our video on AI technologies, Game Changer, Amazing AI Technologies That Will Change Our Life, video on the left, or you might like the new video on Tesla Pi Phone, leaked Tesla Phone Pi Specs vs iPhone 13 Pro on the right.